What's up guys, this is Connor. Welcome back to Three Pedal Devils. Today we're working on my Tau Tau TBR7 again. So in the last video I took delivery of this thing. The boys helped me unbox it, get it off the trailer, and then kind of start doing some initial assembly stuff on it. I've got most of it put together at this point. It's about a week later. Uh, I didn't get too much done during the week just because I had some different things going on. But I've got it mostly put together to the point where I could ride it. I've got 18 miles on it at this point. I never finished putting it back together fully. So today we're gonna finish up that assembly. I've got a few different things to tidy up. So I need to install the, the two skid plates. I've got them both mocked up on there right now because I wasn't sure how they went on there. I wanted to check that before the video. I got to install my rear brake lever. I also need to reinstall my carburetor. I pulled that off to jet it. I'll talk about that in a little bit. And then I've got to install the hand guards. Um, let's jump right into it and get going. So I'm going to start with the skid pans. I've got this kind of crazy curvy shaped one on here like this. There are two mounting points right here and then another two right down there with a bar going across on, that's welded to the frame with some threaded, threaded holes there. And then this one I've got a sandwich between those two. There's a hole in this skid plate. And then I've got two bolts back here mounting it in that spot. I don't know if this is 100% correct. Uh, just kind of seemed to be how it fit. Uh, I've got these two bolts here with the lock washers that seem to fit good there. Some weird button head screws that fit there. And then the last two flange head bolts that fit there. So. I'm going to tighten that up and see how it goes. So I got that all tightened down. Um, not sure if the fasteners are the proper ones, but that's just kind of all I had left to fit. And I don't know, it seems to go together pretty good. Fitment's all right and it seemed to tighten up. So I think that's how that's supposed to go. Let's move on to the rear brake lever now. So this thing's kind of confusing. I know it goes in this way in that little peg. So this piece looks like it's got a thread onto there and then has a pin that goes through like that onto the lever. Okay, I got that on. The next thing I think I gotta put in place is this spring. It looks like it might hook around this foot peg and go back to there. Uh, so I'll set it down and try that out. Okay, uh, we got that hooked up. I think the next one's probably this. I feel like that's not how that's supposed to go. All right, I've got everything hooked up. That looks definitely not right to me, but who knows? We'll leave it like that and take it out for a spin and try it out, see if it's right. So next I wanna talk a little bit about the carburetor and work on putting that back in. So I pulled it out. Um, it's pretty well known that these bikes run lean from factory and people often buy a Makuni carb. I think it's the VM26 and replace it. But the reason they do that is because the screws that hold the bowl onto this thing come flat with no sort of head on them and flush to the bowl so you can't take them out. But what I did is used a Dremel and cut a little slot in each head and then used a flat head screwdriver and backed them out. And then I went and bought some stainless M4 by 0.7 pitch by 14 millimeter long screws and I'm gonna put some Loctite on them and drop them down through the bowl, thread it in. I also have a 108 jet left over from a rebuild I did on my, uh, my Nighthawk 450. People say to run a 110 but I'm impatient and had the 108 so I'm gonna try that see how it works. Um, but yeah, that seemed to work pretty good for me was cutting the slot in the head and then replacing it with these screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this thing back together and then try to throw it in the bike. So 
I'm back. It's the next day. I got kind of pissed off working on this thing last night. I got the carburetor all back together and was doing a time lapse. But when I um, slapped the throttle cable back in the top there, I thought that I f***ed it up because uh, I screwed it down, went to crank the throttle open and it was just like seized. So then I forced it and then it was stuck open and wouldn't close. So I messed with this a few times trying to reroute the cable through the spring because I did do it wrong the first time but that didn't end up fixing it and I got pissed off so I went home and then my dad came here after work to help me out with it um, help troubleshooting and I pulled the tank off just to make it easier because I was almost bending the hell out of the needle pulling this out of the carb underneath the tank but we uh, we took a look at it my dad was originally thinking that maybe I just needed to oil the chain or not the chain, oil the cable, um, but we eventually found out that when I removed tension from the cable by unscrewing the cap and relieving the spring pressure, the cable was loose enough that it unwound itself from the throttle tube, so when I was cranking this over it was just like grinding the hell out of the cable, and yeah, it wasn't super great. But we got that all put back together now, and it's snapping back perfectly. So now I'm going to work on putting the tank back on, but when I took that off, I also fucked up because I'm an idiot. And uh, you can't see it, but actually, yeah, you can right here. The two wires for the fuel level sensor ripped out of the connector because I sent it. So now I got to try and depin those and put some new pins on and recrimp that connector. So I'll probably not show that on camera just because it'll be boring as hell. But once I fix that connector, I'm going to slap the tank back on the bike, uh, place the spark plug because this thing comes with a resistor spark plug and resistor spark plug boot, which is not right. Uh, you want a either one or the other. So since I've got the resistor cover and boot, I bought some non-resistor plugs, the D8EAs. NGKs. So I'm going to slap one of those on and yeah, so I'll pick it back up in a sec. much ready to go so what I'm going to do now is try to start it and then set my idle. Oh, All right lesson one when your Tao Tao Chinese motorcycle neutral light indicator is on that doesn't mean you're in neutral. I thought I had my clutch lever depressed when I started it and it showed I was in neutral so I'm not sure why the bike lurched forward but I guess always pull in your clutch when you're starting just in case you're not in neutral. I almost throttled this wall in my box. Alrighty, that was wild. Let's try it again. Alrighty, so it seems to be running pretty okay there. I turned the idle screw all the way in and then backed it out about half to three quarters of a turn and it idled pretty high, backed it off another half turn or so and the uh, RPMs dropped quite a bit and then I brought it back to about three quarters of a turn out. I'm gonna put the seat back on, go ride it for a little bit and get it up to temp and then I'll um, you know, let it idle at operating temp and then reset that idle speed. Uh, it doesn't have a tachometer, so I don't really know what the RPMs are, 
so I'm just kind of going to have to tune it by ear and uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, I'm going to set this down, put it back together and go out on a quick ride. Woohoo, doggy! She's ripping with the new jet, baby! Wow, this thing's a beast! You can hear it's idling pretty high now, so I'm gonna set it down and tune in the idle now that it's warmed up a little bit. Alright, that was just too much fun. I think I might have to take it back out now that I just tuned it in a little bit more. Um, one thing I did notice is that the valves are kind of ticking like crazy. So I had issues with it idling before, so I took the valve cover off, set the valve lash, because they were both extremely tight, basically no gap to about half thou. So I set the intake to three thousandths of an inch gap and five thou on the exhaust. Um, I'm wondering if now that I've got some miles on it, breaking it in, that that loosened up a bit because it's kind of ticking away. So I might have to look into that pretty soon here. Well, I think I'm going to end today's video here. Uh, we've made a lot of progress in today's video. The last thing I got to do is install this little bar. It goes there up in front. This guy here connects to a bit on the frame in the front and then the two holes here are for uh, tying these fairings together so they don't flop around quite so much like this. But it's not gonna be super interesting so I'll do that off camera. Um, yeah, and we got a lot done in today's video. The Tao Tao is absolutely ripping now with that new jet. Absolutely love it. Anyways, that's gonna be the end of this one. Thanks for tuning in. Hopefully we'll be doing some more cool stuff to this Tao Tao pretty soon. If you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel and stay up to date with what we're working on, building up towards our epic adventure on the Trans-Wisconsin Adventure Trail. I'm going to be riding this $1,400 Chinese bike, uh, 700 off-road miles, and then, and then another 400 miles on-road back home. So I'm going to be really putting this thing through its paces. Stay tuned for that. We'll catch you in the next one. Sure. I've keep kept space before and like I think this is enough. Are you guys trying to keep space? I'm trying to make him keep space. He thinks he's We all need to just take a look in the mirror. Keep space. So back the f up. Nice. Oh. Okay. Okay, okay. Um leave it. Leave it. You look so stupid on this little I screen. Am stupid. That's the problem. <laughs>